old school training is the best training. Functional, gritty, simple, and most importantly, effective. But you need the right equipment for this. It'll probably take you a few years to collect what you need to train solo with, so you need to start as soon as possible. So here's what I have and recommend. And in this video, I will list a lot of things that I currently use to train with and for a full breakdown and all the links that you need in order to buy some of these, make sure to visit the blog post where I break everything down that I will list here in the video. So you can just click over and buy what you need at the moment. So let's start. So the first one is the most obvious one and it's the one you carry with you everywhere you go. This is the only thing you'll have with you at all times and it's your body weight. And you need to start mastering moving your body around and doing things like push-ups, handstand push-ups, pull-ups, jump squats, single leg squats, burpees, muscle-ups, hand leg raises, ring dips. So before you do anything else, you need to master your body weight. Now, if you've been doing this for some time, you can probably already do a lot of push-ups, a lot of squats with just your body. And that's the one downside to body weight is the volume you'll have to do once you are strong enough. But you can make it difficult again with a weighted vest. Start with a 20 pound vest. And I have a very old one, Gold's Gym one I bought at Walmart. Now they no longer sell this one, but you can get a very similar one. In addition to this, I have a more heavier weight that you can adjust and it goes up to 70 pounds. I like using this one for long hikes and for super low rep body weight work. The next one is ab wheel and a power wheel. And ab wheels are super underrated and underused. And they will expose your body weakness very quickly. If you can do a standing ab wheel rollout, then you have some serious core strength. Now these ab wheels are very cheap, durable, and they're highly functional. The power wheel is another great addition to have to the ab wheel, but you hook it up to your legs. Now I would get the ab wheel first before going to the power wheel. The next one and the essential one is a pull-up bar. This is one piece of equipment you absolutely have to have and have to use. This will train your upper body, will train your grip, and you need to start doing pull-ups. There are many pull-up variations you can do. Standard pull-ups, wide or narrow grip, towel pull-ups, and even chin-ups. With the pull-up bar, you can also do hand and leg raises to work your core. And I do these all the time. Both pull-ups and using pull-up bar for hand and leg raises. You can also hang rings, gymnastic rings off the bar, but more on rings later. Now I have a backyard pull-up bar installed into the ground, as well as one for inside. Now the ones I have aren't easy solutions for pull-up bar. However, there are pull-up bars that are non-destructive and you can install them between your doorway. And you need to do pull-ups on a regular basis. And if you have space for an outside pull-up bar, even better. And eventually, your goal is to work your way to doing muscle-ups, in addition to pull-ups. Next is the one piece of equipment you absolutely also have to have if you are training to fight, or just staying fight ready. And this is, of course, a punching bag. And no fighter's gym is complete without a punching bag. This is how you train your power, your speed, technique, combinations, full work, and work your distance. Now there are many punching bags out there and the one you want to start with is the 80 plus pound punching bag. Something you can kick, punch, and knee, as well as throw elbows on. The bag I currently have is the Everlast 100 pound and this is the brand new I got as of 2023. And you can buy very similar bags and I would aim for anything 80 or plus pounds. Prior to this I had an older bag that I had to replace it with. The one that I had lasted me for about eight years which is pretty good time frame. Ideally, you do want to have a second bag, a snatcher body bag. This is 60 plus pound round bag that allows you to work more angles, hooks and uppercuts. Something that the standard bag does not provide. This bag I have is extremely durable. I've now had it for eight plus years and it still looks in great shape. So this is the second bag you should have. So you can practice those angles on the bag, especially hooks and uppercuts. Now, when shopping for a heavy punching bag, make sure you buy the one that's already been filled. There are many bags that don't come filled, so you would need to buy clothes and sand in order to pack it in. So when you buy one, make sure it says filled and it's the weight that you're looking for. Then you have another essential piece of equipment you need to own, and these are kettlebells. Kettlebells will train your fight conditioning, 
dynamic functional movement, and help develop a strong grip. I started kettlebells back in about 2010, and I saw my conditioning, my strength, power, explosiveness, and overall grappling and striking dramatically improve. And I only wish I started using them earlier. And I've been using kettlebells ever since. Kettlebells are extremely versatile. You can do a lot of different exercises and routines and circuits with them. And most importantly, they're dynamic. I own five kettlebells so far. One 25 pound, two 35s, one 50 and one 70. And I'm looking to get more. So I recommend that you start with a pair of 25s or 35s. Get the basic movement down and then you can get heavier kettlebells. And the last word I will say about kettlebells, Fedor trained with them, as many other fighters now do also. And that is all that really needs to be said about kettlebells. Next you have jump rope. Jump rope improves your footwork, rhythm and timing. And it's one piece of equipment that is extremely cheap and has been used for decades, if not hundreds of years. Jump rope trains you to stay light on the ball of your feet. It helps to strengthen the tendons around your ankles, which is essential for fighters. It's great for cardio, excellent for footwork, and with all these benefits, you can't ignore jumping rope. And it's also very easy to take with you when you travel, so you can do some cardio on the road. And then you have regular rope. This is a simple piece of equipment that can be used for improving your head movement and develop fighter's conditioning. There are two ways I implement this rope into training. First is for footwork and head movement. I tie the rope between two bars and I work bob and weave utilizing distance, footwork and striking combinations. And the second way I use it is for conditioning. And primarily I use the old school lines done cardio drill. This is where you tie a rope at knee level between two bars. You can also use two chairs or two people who can hold the rope. And then you jump non-stop side to side, front to back and over under. You do this about 10 times each one after another as a circuit. You rest for about a minute and then you repeat. And this could be used as a cardio circuit or as a finisher at the end of your workout. Great piece of equipment, extremely cheap and very functional. Then we have metal hand grips. Now these are supplemental to work and strengthen your grip anywhere and anytime. This is not something you would do actually during training, but just always have them around when you're watching fights, when you're driving, stuck in traffic, when you're traveling, when you're on a plane. Just squeeze these for reps, for time, or you squeeze and hold for a certain amount of time. Now the four I have have different weight pressures, starting at 150, then goes to 200, 250, and 300. And these are great to constantly do throughout the day. Another great piece of equipment you should have is a reflex ball or a tennis ball with elastic band. Now this is self-made and all I did was I took an elastic band and a tennis ball and created two pieces of equipment with this. One is a reflex ball where I can tie the elastic band at the top and then tie it down and use it for accuracy, for precision, for timing, for speed. And then another one is using a baseball hat tied with elastic band to a tennis ball and you just simply put that on, punch it and have the ball come back to you. So you have to really train precision and reflexes to hit that ball so it doesn't hit your back. And I use these two all the time. Now if you don't want to actually create any of these yourself, they're very quick and easy to make, but you can actually buy them on Amazon. You can buy the reflex ball as well as the handband and the ball connected together. And I have a small sandbag used for head movement. This is a very simple piece of equipment that is extremely effective for head movement and footwork. It's a small lightweight 5 to 8 pound of sand inside Ziploc bags tied into a t-shirt and then hung on the rope. And then you just push that away and then you use it to bob and weave, to slip, parry and then counter. You don't actually punch the bag but you only use it for head movement. And this is also something you can buy if you don't want to create one. Then we have tires. These are fantastic. You can use tires for flipping and for sledgehammering. Now these do need more space and you actually have to go out and get one. Tire flips will develop brute explosive strength and you'll need this for takedowns and clinch work. Tire flipping requires full body to pick up the tire and then to push it away from you. And you have to do this in one swift motion of explosive tire pickup to a flip. Then you also use these tires for sledgehammering and which will develop your punching power, your rotation and your torque as you bring that hammer down. And I love using the tire for tire flips and sledgehammering. 
You can find these large tires at auto body shops or junkyards. I got mine at an old tractor semi tire shop and most of these tires are usually damaged, have nails or screws in them, have multiple patches and now they're waiting to go to a landfill. Now back in about 2010, 2011 when I got these, they were actually happy to give them away for free. This is before everybody started using tires. They weren't very popular at the time. So they just gave it away for free. So I got mine for free. But nowadays you probably have to uh, pay for them. But you might get lucky and get a few free ones. You just have to look around. Then we have battling ropes. Battling ropes are used for anaerobic conditioning and endurance. And you can't half ass battling ropes. You have to really snap the ropes down to get a good wave arc. So you really work your explosiveness for a period of time. It's almost like punching nonstop. Now there's not much else you can do other than battling rope exercises where you just create waves using different movements, but I do enjoy using them periodically for cardio. Now the rope I own is 40 feet and 1.5 inch diameter. So that's what I would start with. I wouldn't get anything smaller in length or in grip size. Then we have sandbags. Sandbags train your functional strength lifting and conditioning. It helps to strengthen your core, your grip and explosive movement. Another thing I like about sandbags is they are uneven load, making it harder to lift. Same weight sandbag will be more difficult to pick up than the same weight on a dumbbell or a barbell. Because barbell and dumbbells are even, sandbag are uneven. So you have to balance the sandbag as you lift, which is very similar to what you do in fighting. Nothing is ever balanced on one side or the other, especially when you're grappling or working clinch. You're always off balance trying to work your position and your movement. You can easily create one of these sandbags by buying your own sand. You can go to Home Depot and buy play sand. You can buy two of these at 50 pounds and you'll have 100 pounds of sand. Then you just buy Ziploc bags, fill them into Ziploc bags and then tie it with duct tape. And then put it inside another Ziploc bag. And this will look like you have kilos of coke. And then you can get an actual bag to put these sandbags into. And I recently bought this one on Amazon, which has been working great so far. It has a good handles and it's been durable so far. The only downside of sandbags is the limit of weight you can fit into one bag. And it also makes it more difficult to do progressive overload as it's kind of impractical to load and unload sandbags from the bag. But that's why you should also have a barbell, which is the next piece of equipment you must own. Barbells are essential for building brute strength. You can go very heavy with a barbell, something that sandbags and kettlebells cannot provide. So doing progressive overload is very easy where you just add weight quickly for uh, during your next set. With a barbell, I only stick with compound movements such as deadlift, search squats, lunges, rows, and I do some kind of barbell work once per week. And you can buy these also. You can pick them up on Amazon. So barbell is something you absolutely need to have. Another thing about punching bags is once you have a few bags, eventually they're going to break down and they're going to be unusable. They're going to start breaking, tearing. So don't throw your old punching bags away. Use them for ground and pound, for carrying, for wrestling throws and suplexes. So you can still use the old bags that you have that you beat up so much by just duct taping over them and using them for additional work. Then you have dumbbells. Now after switching to kettlebells, I've almost removed working with dumbbells but I have not eliminated them completely. Dumbbells are still great for strength training and muscle endurance, but most of the time I use kettlebells over dumbbells. I do have a few pairs of 235s and 240s that I use. Next is the neck harness. You have to train your neck to minimize getting choked out or knocked out. If you have a strong neck, you will absorb a lot of impact without getting rocked or knocked out. Now best neck training is actually done through grappling and wrestling but you do need additional supplemental work. One of these tools is a neck harness. I use this periodically to help to strengthen my neck. I just hang a kettlebell on the end of it and do forward and back extensions and flexions. Then you have gymnastic rings. The exercises with gymnastic rings are more difficult to do due to the instability of doing bodyweight exercises with them. But it's because of this instability is what helps you to build the raw upper body strength. Rings are very versatile. You can do pull-ups, you can do dips, you can do pulls, push-ups, and variety of static isometric holds. And gymnasts are known to have unbelievable upper body strength and they work the rings all the time. So you need to do the same. Then we have resistant bands. These bands are great for leg work to strengthen the inner thigh muscle that you use in kicking and grappling. You can also use these bands for additional resistance in punching and throws. You can buy a set of these 
going from lighter resistance to more difficult resistant band. Then we have Slam Ball. Slam Ball will train your explosiveness, core and conditioning. It's very similar to sledgehammering and Slam Ball will help to develop punching power. I like to incorporate Slam Ball within a circuit of fight cardio and uh, there's not much else you can do with a Slam Ball other than try to slam it on the ground or using it as a side twist as you throw the Slam Ball. And with the minimal exercises you can do with them, the value that they provide is enough and you should have one and I have a 20 pound. So with all these pieces of equipment, it's a lot. It's not something you can just go out and get all of them all at the same time. So what should you start with? Here's what I recommend you begin with. Get a punching bag, a standard or a rack and ball body snatcher. I recommend start with a standard bag first and then get yourself a second bag, the rack and ball body snatcher. Then you need a pull up bar. Then you should have kettlebells, jump rope, gymnastic rings, and a barbell. These six should be your first ones that you get. If you don't have anything else and you're beginning, these are the six that you should start with. 